this is Chicho. welcome to my channel now what I want to do in this video is do a follow-up to the previous video we put together for ASMR math and politics where we talked about how interest rates affect our society and we connected up that uh, that concept with differential accumulation and rate of return right rate of uh, rate of interest right and um, we put a video out uh, out on that and it was a fairly long video it was an hour and a half and I try to connect up a whole bunch of concept giving examples and looking at data right we started off with uh, the compound interest rate formula and we created a table uh, of different um, rates of interest right accumulation of interest right accumulation of capital and uh, we from that table we created a we created a graph and we showed that you know in the limit really if any any person any individual any organization any entity any country is accumulating interest at a higher rate than someone else then in the limit whoever is accumulating at a higher rate of return basically ends up owning everything right that's the way exponential growth works that's the way compound interest works right and then we took that concept and related it to differential accumulation the ideas presented in differential accumulation not all of them but some of them right i try to get put in as many of the ideas as i could uh, and uh, from there we looked at how our how that affects our society and um, what the concept of differential accumulation sort of tells us in a rudimentary level right now i like the way that video came out uh i like the flow of it and i like the way that you know it started off and how it ended so what i ended up doing is forwarding that video with a you know quick little short message to jonathan nitsan one of the people that's come up with uh, um with uh, the concept of differential accumulation uh along with uh i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing these names in incorrectly but uh, Shimshon Beschler um, and Jonathan Nitsan. So I forward the, forwarded uh, the video to Jonathan Nitsan. And, uh, you know, just, just because I know in academia when you're putting forward an idea, it's really hard to keep track of where it's going. And you usually can't keep track of where, where your idea goes, right? It's like throwing a rock in a pond and watching the ripples go out right so i thought he would be interested in this and um, to my surprise he replied back to me and he ended up watching the whole video i believe because he sent me some uh, feedback regarding the video and what i want to do is share that feedback with you because i think it's it's pretty important and um, and um, i think it sort of will tie in with some of the future work that we're going to do um regarding the economics uh, um, the mathematics of economics right how we're going to deal with politics and uh, create a whole series on the mathematics of economics which is going to be uh you know hopefully a module for math in real life in the language of mathematics right now i forward the forward the link the video to uh professor nitsan jonathan nitsan and um he sent me some, uh, you know, some pleasant um, what do you cor correspondence, just a couple of a couple of comments and whatnot, um, with me thanking him for putting, putting uh, thanking Jonathan and uh, um, uh, Professor Beschler uh, for putting this idea forward because I think it connects up with a lot of the uh, a lot of the things that we see happening in our society, right, and. Uh, Professor Nitsan had a couple comments that I want to I want to share with you. And the first one is this. Now, in the video um, because we started off with talking about uh, the rate of interest because we're talking about compound interest and stuff like this and we continued or I continued uh, that phrase rate of interest all the way to the end. And Professor Nitsan mentioned uh, that I should have not just referred to a rate of interest but I should have referred to it as a rate of return so in the video when we transitioned from you know the compound interest rate and rate of interest and we graphed uh, the 
the different rates of interest you know someone accumulating interest at five percent two percent or ten percent right and take, take a look at the exponential growth on that at some point as soon as we start talking about differential accumulation I should have changed the terminology from rate of interest to rate of return because we're not just talking about as professor Nitzan pointed out we're not just talking about finance we're talking about rate of return on anything right and that that's more encompassing than rate of interest so if you're watching that video or if you have watched that video keep this in mind that it's not just the rate of interest that we're talking about but it's the rate of return and return can be uh, a rate of return can be anything coming your way right and we see that through a lot of uh, technology that we've uh, that has come into play in the last 15 20 years or so uh, with metadata or whatever it might be as well as uh, power that uh, our present system gives to organizations or individuals or whoever it might be based on their rate of return right based on how much capital they've accumulated right so that's you know a phrase that you should keep in mind if you're watching that video and the second one is the one that really um, uh, got me excited about the next paper that um, Jonathan Nitsan and uh, Shimshon Bachelor are going to be putting out now I'm going to read you the the comment that uh, Professor Nitsan um, sent me in his email um, and I'm pretty sure it's okay to read this uh, because it's sort of related to to this concept right so basically um, this is uh, so this is what Professor Nitsan said in one of the one of the paragraphs okay and I'm gonna read this whole thing to you and I'm gonna expand on this concept because this concept uh, previous to this he did uh, through this actually he sent me a link to an article um, one of the papers that they had they had published um, I believe this was in 2012 and he mentioned that they were going to be doing an updated article an updated piece on this concept uh, in the next few weeks or next couple of months so I'm really looking forward to reading that uh, so let me read you this uh, this paragraph in uh, one of the emails that uh, uh, professor Nitsan sent me uh, and then we'll expand on it okay I guess model style should be ready in a few weeks okay um, so here's the paragraph uh, this is quoting uh, Jonathan Nitsan right Two comments regarding your video. First, you refer mostly to the narrow concept of the rate of interest rather than the general concept of the rate of return. Although the math is the same, and although you note several times that the principle is general, the emphasis on rate of interest, uh, the interest, uh, the emphasis on interest rates might give the impression you are dealing with finance and banks rather than with every form of capital, right? which is what we just talked about second differential growth rates do not necessarily imply the concentration of all capitalized power in the hands of a, of a single entity the reason is that power is a dialectic process it elicits its own resistance and that resistance pre-orders the very underpinnings of power see for example our 2002 paper on the asymptotes of power okay and the paper that he's talking about is this one the asymptotes of power and this is um you know i spent the last uh, uh few days uh, reading through this and taking 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 some notes and looking at the charts and graphs and stuff like this right um and it's a good paper to read and it's called the asymptotes of power and i'll supply the link uh, to this article in the video as well as uh, a more recent i guess it was 2015 that it came out i, I finished watching it uh, or I'm almost finished watching the whole thing it's like a, a two hour plus uh, sort of a lecture that's uh, 
sort of summarizing everything about cop, uh, capitalist power, which they refer to as CASP, uh, which is, you know, an extension of differential accumulation where, it is, well, it's not really an extension, it's sort of together where it's more broad talking about how our present system works, right? Now, what Professor Nitsen uh, implies with this uh, comment, the second comment that he made, where he says, differential growth rates do not necessarily imply the concentration of all capitalized power in the hands of a single entity. The reason is that power is a dialectic process. It elicits its own resistance, and that resistance pre-orders the very underpinnings of power, right? Now, just one comment regarding the previous video. I try to fit in as many concepts as I could regarding differential accumulation in that video, but I didn't cover everything because I would have to go through defining things, right? Two of the, or one of the main concepts that I didn't mention in that video was pre-order. Now, pre-order is short form. It's a, it's a word, I believe, uh, Professor Nitsen and um, uh, uh, Shimshon Bachelor introduced. So pre-order, you can think of as creating order. Okay. And in our present capitalistic system, those who accumulate power at a faster rate than others, they create the order. Now, the creating of the order, create order, plays out in our society in many different ways many different branches, many different fields. It basically encompasses our complete society, may it be through mainstream media, may it be through film, may it be through intellectual property rights, may it be through copyright, may it be through monopoly powers, may it be through food, uh, control of food, may it be through control of transportation, may it be through control of uh, academia right every individual every organization that is has placed themselves who has been who have been accumulating power at a higher rate than others they basically place themselves in our current capitalistic system in the echelons of power right in the higher if you think about as a pyramid they're at the top of the pyramid creating the order of our society right Cree order that's a really important concept to appreciate because it it implies so much okay so what professor nitsan implies that the the entities that are accumulating power right at a higher rate than everyone else as we talked about in the previous video they become asymptotic relative to you know, is exponential growth, and they dwarf anyone else that's accumulating at a, at a at a lower rate than they are, right? So they, be, you know, their rate of growth goes like goes up like this, and they become asymptotic, right? They just keep on going up, going up, going up like this. And asymptotes is something that we talked about in a previous video for uh, the language of mathematics, right? Where we took a look at a function f of x equals one over x, right? And in mathematics, uh, the one restriction we have uh, is that we cannot divide by zero. Because as soon as we start dividing by zero, what happens is the universe basically explodes. The laws of mathematics collapse. Or our understanding of what happens based on the laws of mathematics are undefined. We really don't know what happens at an asymptote. We really don't know what happens when we divide by zero. The only thing we can do in mathematics when we come up with a situation where in the functions we are dividing by zero, what we can do is look at what the function does as it approaches the asymptote, right? For the video we did where we took a look at the asymptote, we talked about the concept of the asymptote, we were talking about zero and infinity, 
we had the asymptote on one side of the asymptote the graph was going up actually i believe it's on the other side on this side the graph was going up as we approached the asymptote from a positive x-axis right going up exponentially to positive infinity and on the other side the asymptote was going down to negative infinity as we approached the asymptote so when jonathan nitsan mentions that uh form of capital second differential differential growth rates do not necessarily imply the concentration of all capitalized power in the hands of a single entity the reason is that capital is a dialectic process dialectic process meaning that there's opposing forces to this accumulation of capital right it's not these these entities that acquire all this capital they try to create the order in our society the pre-order our society right they try to do that but it's a dialectic force where there's opposing forces right one of the best examples that we have at present right now we're in 2016 november the first week of november 2016 and this thing has been playing out for the last few weeks few weeks is um what's going on uh at the pipeline um standing rock pipeline right where those who have been accumulating power for a long time the oil industry the pipeline industry the energy industry the fossil fuel industry the the policing industry the the wall street power really they're trying to put a pipeline through a water supply right through a zone which if there's any problems right with that pipeline if there's any leakage if there's any anything that goes wrong has the possibility of contaminating huge huge area that people are dependent on for fresh water right as they're drinking water right as their water of life right and as if you know i'm a geophysicist right and i did 10 years of geophysical work and i've done a lot of work in the environmental field that's basically what i focused on for a whole decade right i went up to brine pits and you know we leaked out contamination and landfills and looked at pipeline leaks and stuff like this and i can honestly tell you i have never been to a brine pit that doesn't leak i've never been to a landfill that does not have plumes coming out of it and as far as i know the places i went to there is not a single pipeline that does not leak right so these organizations right wall street organizations the organizations that have been accumulating capital over the last few decades right that are creoring our society are meeting resistance from the people right and not just the people that are living in that zone but people who have been affected with the same type of problems in other parts of the world, right? In other parts of the United States where a lot of them are dropping everything they do and they're going to resist this pipeline coming through, right? That's what Jonathan Nitsan is referring to as a uh, reason that the power is a dialectic process, right? It elicits its own resistance. And that resistance pre-orders the very underpinnings of power. So what we are seeing right now is the resistance becoming more powerful and possibly reordering things, right? Where at present right now, uh, you know, the administration, the government has come out and said they might think about redirecting the pipeline they're just going to see how things play out so what they're implying is they're waiting to see how this resistance how this conflict is going to play out and how it plays out is going to decide what the government's going to do right an extremely relevant example of what jonathan nitsan is talking about and going back to this paper that he sent the asymptotes of power and the follow-up that they're going to do in the next few weeks what they do in this paper is give examples 
of where uh, our present economic system, our present political system is meeting, is coming up against their asymptotes and how that will pre-order our society into the future, how the present order that has been created based on those who have accumulated power over the last few decades or last few centuries, if you want to think about it, how a lot of those areas are hitting their asymptotes or not hitting it, approaching their asymptotes at a fairly fast rate and growing, 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 where we're seeing you know, I forget what the stats are right now. It's one percent of the world uh, of people in the world control more than ninety-nine percent of the people in the world, or you know, point zero one percent controls more than you know has more wealth than fifty percent of the world, right? So they're hitting their asymptotes, and what Jonathan Nitsan and uh, Professor um, Shimon Bechler are mentioning is that. Uh, the dominant capital right now in our society and dominant capital uh, is the other term that I didn't I didn't cover and dominant capital is basically our present economic and political system those institutions those individuals who have been accumulating capital over the last few decades and some centuries right dominant capital has pre-ordered our society but they're meeting resistance they're meeting their asymptotes and if, uh, and if you recall in some of the other videos uh, where we've talked about this, where if you want to see how the dominant capital with the order that they've created in society is approaching asymptotes to a level where all of a sudden something clicks, right? And the order in society changes. Um, what you want to do, uh, if you want to get a good example of some of the places that this has happened throughout history, is read some of Chris Hedges' work, where um, specifically the book that we've talked about a few times, maybe through, uh, you know, how to read a textbook, um, and we talked a little bit about this politics, is Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. And Chris Hedges gives examples where the order in society, everything seems to be business as usual until something happens where there's a huge paradigm shift and all of a sudden the dominant capital loses complete control over the society and a whole new model comes up right and um, one of the best examples and i've watched a few chris hedges lectures and I've read some of his articles and days of destruction days of revolt and he always mentions this is i believe it was in poland or czech republic this one of the eastern uh, european countries where uh, there were people demonstrating in the streets and the dominant capital those in power in government gave the order for the military for the police to fire on the demonstrators right with live bullets and the police refused and as soon as that happened within days the people in power lost complete control the whole society was reordered right there was a brand new right as professor Nitsan mentions the reason is that power is a dialectic process right it elicits its own resistance and that resistance pre-orders the very underpinnings of power and that's sort of as far as i want to take it when it comes to uh the politics aspect of things um but i i wanted to share this uh extra info regarding the previous video and uh, my conversation that i had with uh jonathan nitsan and i thank him for providing you know uh, the sort of the corrections i guess to the video that i put out or the additions to the video that I put out. Um, I will um, supply the links to Capitals uh, as Power website in the description of the video, as well as um, to this article that I read uh, in regards to the asymptotes of power, which is sort of providing some data, uh, some analysis of uh, sort of showing us that, uh, you know, dominant capital, um, our present, political economic system is coming up against this asymptotes and 
we, we're not really sure what's going to come out of this, right? What's going to happen on the other side of the asymptote if we continue to function, right? As time progresses, right? Because time is one directional moving this way. So as we come up towards the asymptote, how is this asymptote going to play out? Is it going to be coming down like this where dominant capital is going to give up a lot of its power, right? To creator or society? Is it going to be a smooth transition into a more, well, let's say different system? Or is dominant capital going to start off down here and try to build up capital again? Is it going to be a complete restructuring of our society with a certain amount of reordering, uh, hopefully peaceful reordering within our society? Okay, so I'll supply that link to that article as well, as well as uh, the most recent lecture that I found, found online um, from Jonathan Nitsan, um, where they, you know, they're sitting down and talking about um capitalist power differential accumulation um and pre-ordering our society basically um and it's a really good little discussion it's a long uh long video it's two plus hour video and it's well worth watching um and that you know you know should uh those links should give you um uh, direct you to the right places if you want to follow this concept more uh, more and we will follow this concept more uh in the future and um and we'll see where it leads us right and we'll we'll take a look at some of the more recent events that are happening um in our society one of the places being at uh, standing rock right now where you know there's a pipeline coming through and there's resistance right there's uh, resistance right and we'll see where that leads the government's already come out and said they're gonna wait to see how the things play out right that's you know dialectic process uh, that's it for now I just want to give you guys an update and follow up regarding the previous video and um just pass on act as a node really and pass on the additional information that jonathan it's um, shared and um i thought for those of you who are interested in this uh you'd appreciate it and there will be links in the description of the video um that'll take you to capital's power uh, website and a paper and a lecture where you can you know if you're interested in this you can follow this up a little bit more okay uh that's it for now I'll see you guys in the next video.